Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. Hey, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. We're going to go ahead and get right on into the topic, but first, a word from our sponsor. This is A-Game, fast-acting, long-lasting, with no side effects. Hey there, how are you doing today, my Crimsonites? And as usual, we're just gonna jump right into the topic. So today, we wanna discuss the whole Pierce Morgan versus Meghan Markle and then being confronted by his co-host that made him walk off set and then Sharon Osbourne defending him and having a heated conversation between herself and Cheryl Underwood on the talk following Pierce Morgan's comments. Now, if you're not familiar with any of this, that's okay. Just Google it. It comes right up because that's the buzz right now. But I am going to give you a little bit of a timeline for it. So basically, Pierce Morgan has had an ongoing one-sided feud with Meghan Markle. He doesn't like her. Um, he feels like she ghosted him at some point after she started seriously dating Harry. And ever since then, he has not liked Meghan. So every chance that he gets, he has some disparaging remarks or whatever. So we know that recently, Meghan and Harry did an interview with Oprah that was watched worldwide by millions of people. Um, I actually even did a show about uh, that, which you can check out right here. So basically within the interview, Meghan Markle tells Oprah that at one point she had suicidal ideations. Okay. The stresses of everything that was going on, uh, had given her some, you know, she was very depressed and she had some suicidal thoughts. And when she went to the palace to receive mental health uh, assistance, she was denied. And also one of the other things uh, that she said in the interview that has everyone a buzz is that she was saying that some members of Harry's family were talking to him uh, about Archie's skin color, which is their firstborn son, and, what, and potentially how dark he could be. Uh, and she was feeling like they deny him a royal title based on the potential of how black he was going to look. So essentially, Piers Morgan comes out and basically says he does not believe Meghan Markle when she says she was that depressed and that she had suicidal ideas and things of that nature. And so uh, basically, he is a co-host on Britain's version of Good Morning America. OK, so one of his co-hosts is a black man and they had a heated discussion also about racism and all of the surrounding things and Megan and the royal family and all of those things, which eventually caused Piers to walk off set because he didn't like what his co-host was saying to him. Uh, and basically his co-host was basically calling him out on why he can't stand Meghan Markle and he says all of these things about her and she doesn't ever say anything about him. Um, now, let's flip over to the situation between Cheryl Underwood and Sharon Osbourne, who are co-hosts for The Talk. And so Sharon Osbourne jumped out the window and defended Pierce Morgan, which most people think He's the big R word, okay? And so she defended his right to have free speech and this and that, which prompted a conversation about race, uh, 
between herself and Cheryl Underwood, which became very heated. Sharon Osbourne became very upset. Uh, actually, Cheryl Underwood kept her composure during that uh, that back and forth that they were having. And here's what my take on everything is. I'm going to take a little bit of a different take, as I usually do. See, I don't have that much of an opinion on the actual conversations that were held on national television in either the UK or America. My issue is with the swirling community of black women. And I'm going to speak to them in this video. Because Meghan Markle's mother is a swirler. She's not just a black woman that decided or that simply fell in love and happened to be in an interracial relationship that's different from swirling. Swirling is when you get into these relationships thinking you're gonna level up and receive some sort of status that you can't receive by being with a black man. So Meghan Markle's mother decides she's gonna level up and swirl and she has children by her husband who is not a black man. Meghan gets married off into the royal family. She's unprepared for that. And thus we see some of the results of that unpreparedness and that decision to try to level up, quote unquote. For all intents and purposes, Meghan Markle, in my opinion, is not a black woman. She's not. From what I understand, her father is Caucasian and her mother is biracial. That's my understanding of that. So therefore, Megan is not 50% either. She's probably about 25% black. Her skin is very fair. Her hair is very straight. And she, if, if this were the early 1900s or whatever, she'd be able to pass what the old folks call passing. When you look Caucasian enough that other Caucasians think you are also Caucasian. The issue here is that we are talking or they are talking race about a woman that does not even appear to be black. But we know that she has a percentage within her because of her mother. Yet, there is still a conversation being had about racism. That is because swirling in order to try to get a status above what you were born or what you perceive you can get doesn't work because the other side always sees the product of that swirling as black. They always see them as black. They see biracial children as black children, not biracial children or mixed children. They don't see Megan as mixed. They see her as black. Okay. And if there is any latent prejudices connected to that, those are going to come up. What's happening Ladies, when you try to do this whole swirling and try to breed your blackness out and with it trying to breed out a low status that you think you're low born, because let's just understand, America doesn't really work on a caste system. Okay, if you're born 
in a certain economic status or whatever, you don't, you're not bound to stay there where you can't move around in within the your life, right? The only time that was in effect was during slavery and then the period immediately after. Technically, there was a such thing as being born free or born a slave, but let's just be real. In practice, during that time period, if you were born black, you were born in the slave class. They perceived you as that regardless. However, this is 2021. Okay. And you're trying to breed your blackness out because you associate your blackness with a low born status that you can't shed unless you integrate with the dominant society. What you fail to realize is that they don't see it like that. Just you. Any product born of such unions that attempt to quote unquote get on the inside or the upper echelon of their of the economic or the elite, they're going to be looked at as black and then potentially treated as such. You can't breed out your blackness and think you're going to achieve the privileges of whiteness or that through your children, you will achieve it. What are you mammies on the plantation? What's wrong with you? That's how the plantation used to work. I'm gonna try to save my kids. So I'm gonna breed with the master and hopefully these children will be light bright enough to pass and have a better life than I did. Hopefully they'll be able to get with other Caucasian people and, you know, have a family and then my, the blackness will be bred out and then they will be fully accepted members of the dominant society. And therefore they will have a better status. That's the thinking of a woman on a plantation. Why are you doing it in modern times? Why are you being a mammy in the 21st century? Knock it off. You're being a mammy. That's all this boils down to. And after so many centuries of having your children rejected by the dominant society as a whole, you still think that works. Buffer classes don't work. The concept of buffer classes don't work. They've tried that in other places. In Australia, the buffer class didn't work. It didn't work until all the Aboriginal blood was bred out. They don't even like the buffer class as they create them. Because they're not white enough to be accepted as white and they're not black enough to be accepted as black because we know what you're doing. We know you're being mammies. Okay, it's the mammyism for me, sis. So learn a lesson about why Meghan Markle, of all people, is at the epicenter of a race conversation that is going on between the U.S. and the U.K. All right. So with that being said, I am going to go ahead and wrap this up, but I need you guys to sound off in the comment section. Is this a legitimate conversation? The race conversation is Meghan Markle black in your eyes. Is she a black woman? And therefore this conversation about race is valid. Do you agree that she should be seen as black or that she is seen as black. And this is why these things are happening to her. I just would love to hear your comments. Definitely would love to hear everyone's take 
on this subject. And until next time, bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production and I'll catch you guys on the next one.